Well, I'll be redoing that again then. That's what happens when you're painting direct sunlight and you don't have enough paint. You miss loads of it. What a mess, that's embarrassing. Can't put it on the car like that. Now then, what do we got here? A box, a box full of stuff. So as you see in the last episode, we've got the engine in the car and we realized we was missing quite a bit of stuff. So in this box contains a bit of stuff to get us closer to where we need to be. Let's check it out. What we have in here is the following. We have a loop line kit from Tegua. Now I priced up to do one of these myself um, and it worked out about seven or eight pound dearer. So I just bought the prefab one from Tegua. Happy days. Um, got a throttle position sensor. We've got a 70 mil to 70, uh, 70 mil to 76 mil silicon coupler. Um, that is my slave cylinder in there. But inside there, you can see we've got some AM fittings. We've got a 90 and a straight. Um, and we're going to use the braided hose that I used on the, the brake lines. Um, although I will look to see if I can reuse the held line, the HEL line that's on there. Um, then we've got the new uh, clutch clutch cover, clutch flywheel cover thing. I'll show you the difference in size. Um, this was the part, this here was the part that Tegua were listing as for a K20, um, K20, K24, whatever. Now, that's for an automatic, it's for a torque converter. And what I have in here is the one for K20. Manual gearbox, flywheel cover. They actually call it a clutch cover. Uh, now this one is used, this was off eBay, um, but it's in pretty good shape really, to be honest, what it is. Didn't cost a lot of money either, so happy days with that one. So that's the clutch cover thing sorted out. Um, we've got a couple of wheel, rear wheel bearings in there. Now these were a bit of a find because the 4x114 hubs were a particular issue most of the time. But we've managed to find the correct rear wheel hubs assembly um, with everything you need. So uh, these are for spares really, to be honest, because I don't know if the ones on there are bad. So I did be, I was a little bit naughty. I had them bead blasted or sandblasted and I had them painted and everything with the original wheel bearings on. So we don't know if they're knackered yet, but at least if they are, it's not gonna be a huge, huge job to get these brand new ones swapped in. So um, what else do we have then? Okay, so in this bag, we've got a load of farty bits and pieces, a load of odds and ends. So let's check them out. We've got a new Honda knock sensor for the K20. We have a new gearbox vent cap. Uh, is there a part number somewhere? Don't know. Anyway, yeah, it's a gearbox vent cap, quite a specifically designed thing. Um, then we have the new steering rack lock washers. Now these are not that cheap, they're like seven pounds each, but it has meant I don't need to buy new inner tie rods to replace my other brand new inner tie rods, so that's good. In this bag we have a new inner seal for the K20 slave cylinder that I showed you a minute ago. That was actually really cheap, that was like a couple of quid. And then surprisingly, these were not as expensive as I thought they were going to be. These are JDM Integra steering rack mounting bushes, four pieces. Um, this is what I need to fix that rack and get it all working properly again. So um, we're gonna bash through some of this stuff today, get some of it on the car, get it a bit closer to being ready to fire up. Well, this is likely to be the most difficult job of the day. Sorted. Okay, so I've done a couple of little bits. Um, we've now got the start motor and knock sensor installed. Have to do the start motor first, otherwise you do risk smashing the knock sensor off. So that's why I have to do that way around. Um, now I am just redoing the brackets, or I say redoing, 
finalizing the uh, bracket location for the uh, radiator bracket so I've just stuck another nutser in there so I've now got two there and I've also got two there for it so I've got two holes in each bracket now so it shouldn't twist or move around um, and I've got the final position perfect I'm gonna bung a rubber grommet in there I found the perfect size one that's really really thin so it's not gonna make the radiator stand up too tall so we're gonna get on and do that um, but before we put the radiator back in we're gonna put the clutch slave cylinder on and I'll burn those as we we're gonna have a look to see if I can, if there's enough length on this banjo fitting hose. I haven't got the right banjo bolt, but I've got a couple of AN fittings. This is still dash three, but this has got the silicon outer on, so it's not gonna mash up the paint. We've got an old wash bucket and a vintage vice. And we've got some bits there, which we need to fix up. I've broken a leg off my tripod, so now it's a bipod. So I've had to wedge it in there. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna give this part, the seal goes inside the slave cylinder housing and it seats around the bottom of this collar here. And then when, that, when that's pressed in, you've got some roll pins which go in there and stop it from coming out, but it allows it to wiggle around. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna give all that a right good clean and scrape all the junk off it. Now we need to get a pick to pull out the old, seal now we don't know if this is broken but for the sake of a couple of quid seal like a little x-ring seal like what we use in RC shocks got like a little uh, indentation in the side there so when it compresses it gives you a nice strong seal so actually it does look a it does look a little bit munched on the inside so that can bugger off over there new quality OEM on the parts. Slave cylinder is now mounted onto the gearbox. Um, got the cable, the line, hydraulic line running over there at the moment and that gives me absolute tonnage of additional length in order to cut the banjo fitting off the end. So that's it, slave cylinder is all in, got the 90 degree coupler on there, so it's a dash 3AN, so we have a male to male adapter first going in to the, uh, the bottom swivel which is the factory swivel. So we wound the male male into there and then you may wind on the 90 degree. I did have to undo it at the other end because these lines don't twist. Um, so when you start winding on this one, that end tries to coil up and curl up. So I had to take it off and then do this end first and then just put it back in. Well, I'm no fabricator, but I have managed to successfully complete three brackets that work. Or if you watch a lot of YouTube, whackets. A um, couple of 90s, my little China special box of grommets coming in useful once again. So you just find the relevant size grommet, cut the middle out of it, and then that will sit nicely. Um, it's interesting because they're not flat on the bottom of the radiator because you've got the welds. So that's why I've made the holes a little larger so that when that goes in, the weld will kind of seat nicely. You can't really see very well on the camera, but it will seat sort of just nicely inside the rubber there so it'll isolate a little bit of vibration I mean it's clamped in there fairly rigidly by the top bracket anyway um, which is this piece here and I also put a grommet in the top of that out of the same box so yellow lines just where I'm just going to trim that bracket down a little bit to follow a line that's already on the slam panel there and then I might use an old old hack and get some bicycle inner tube stuck to the bottom side of that so that when I clamp it down it doesn't match my nice new paint so uh there we go, got my bolts ready. Let's send it to get it put back in the car. Uh, rad brackets are back in, so we've just got to drop the radiator in and get the hoses back on. And then I can do the throttle position sensor. We've got, finally got the radiator properly fully mounted and finished mounting. Two bolts in the bottom brackets, two bolts in the top bracket. 
and she is solid as a rock it is very good rubber isolators in the bottom we've got the thermo switch the 80, 80 degree Mishimoto thermo switch in the bottom and the coolant temp sensor in the top all the hoses are trimmed to fit now um, I just nicked a little bit off of this one and it's really sorted out that curve there now so there's no, no little uh, kink in that well we're starting to win a few battles now so both of the new bushes all four of the bushes are now in repainted the rack again from all the scratches that we created on the previous fresh paint from having it in the vice and all of that <coughs> track rod ends are back on brand new block washers are now on because the others were pretty munched so uh, we had to replace those um, got new boots just there long one goes passenger side I believe short one goes driver side so I'm just going to put the loop line on which I have in the box there um, and then I'm going to wind the rack all the way out give the teeth a good clean give it a little bit of a wipe down on both ends and all the rest of it just clean it and tidy it up um, and then I'm going to put the loop line on and then I'm going to put it in the car uh, track rod ends can go on once it's on the car try and make it as short as possible for getting it in the car of course makes life a little bit easier so uh, yeah ST7 Integra rack she is Gucci right now ready to go the Teguar and uh, power steering line loop kit is that what you call it uh, consists of uh, two uh, AN adapters and a single dash six AN line I think they're dash six one of these is bigger than the other by the looks of it. One has a, uh, one's got a, a seal on it, the other one hasn't. Uh, so I think the smaller one goes in this hole. Looks to be, the one I might have to chase those threads out a little bit because they feel a little tight. And then the big one, obviously, Goes in there. Are they left hand thread or something? Oh no, that looks to be alright. So. Okay, right, so we'll get some spanners out and we'll wind those bad boys in. Well, we fast forward a little bit. We now have our second complete DC2 steering rack, including new boots and a working vent tube. Something I didn't have on the last lot, and uh, let me tell you, they don't work very well without the vent tube. It resists the motion quite a bit, and I would suggest you use them. The steering rack bushes are in, loop lines on. She's freshly painted. I'm gonna slide under there on my bit of cardboard, Namazoku style. We're gonna get it done. We did a thing, people. Steering rack is now back in the car. All the bolts done up. Um, not the easiest of jobs to do on your own from underneath. But she's in. Everything stayed attached. Nothing's touching anything else. Um, loop line is a little on the long side. But not fouling anything and it's not actually in the way of anything either so uh, that's all done and dusted so now I've just got to connect it back up on the inside and then uh, sort of somewhere near roughly get it pointing straight and then sort the wheel centering out and then uh, obviously the tires are going to be done on proper alignment at a later date but we just need to get it so we can push it around and roll it again happy days Tricky little bastard, aren't you? Well, we did another thing. Rear engine mount is now on. It tried to fight me a little bit because these two flat sections, one was slightly out to the other. So I had a bit of trouble getting the bolt through, but once I got the bolt through, it was plain sailing. So they're all torqued up. Um, I just realized as well that we didn't torque the gearbox mounts before we put the engine in. So that's a job for tomorrow. Um, intermediate shaft is all bolted on and torqued up so 
this all bit here is mostly done. All that's left to do here now is to get the heater valve on here, cut into the K-tuned hose in there, something like that. I'm trying to make up a little bit of a, uh, what's the word? A sleeve to go on this pipe because this one's 17 mil, this one's 20 mil and the K-tuned hoses are both 20 mil. Now I've seen some people push them up over that nut, but hell with the camera. I've seen some people push them up over that nut just there, um, but I don't think I want to do that. So I'm going to just sleeve it and put it onto the proper section where it's supposed to be. So tomorrow's job, we're going to cut that heat valve in. We're going to do the heat pipes. We're going to torque the gearbox properly. We're going to put the drive shafts and knuckles all back on. So now have the knuckles back and really there isn't much left to do after that really up this end um fuel lines to make but that's probably one of the last things to do and wiring so yeah my van's currently broken and being repaired has another water pump fail on that so i can't do both so that's gone into the garage to get done for the service history as well and whilst that's being done i get to mess around on the case swap and get us a little bit closer to the finish line so back tomorrow crack on and do a little bit more I haven't done a lot of filming today so I've just been needing to make a bit of progress so I haven't got much time left but uh, as you can see here we now have this whole corner put back together so caliper disc damper uh, coil over sorry wishbone brake lines all that jazz but hey what's this we got a little drive shaft or an axle for you Americans and uh, it's sitting in the diff so that's progress we've got the intermediate shaft on the other side and we've got the other drive shaft sitting in there um, I wasn't able to get as far with this side so this is just all hanging uh, sitting there ready to go basically um, had a slight issue with the wheel bearing um, on the knuckle when I've had the studs done. Um, it's come back and uh, it was a risk anyway, but there is quite a lot of slop. Why don't you focus? There is quite a lot of slop in that bearing, which is... Uh, obviously not cool and also the ball joint they put in is too long so I don't quite know why that's different got to figure it out but just throw some more money at that why not second wheel bearing third ball joint not even driven the car why not just keep going in it um, next job is to cut in the heater valve into this far hose here and then figure out what's going on with the water neck coming off there because it, uh, it's a little weird because the the hose is too fat for the first bit but it's the right thickness for this bit behind the nut there's a weird little nut just there yeah you can sort of just see there's a bit of a nut there and uh I've seen some pictures where that's been pushed over the nut all the way up here. Now that might work if you clamp it to that because the in, inner diameter of this hose is much better suited to this rather than just clamping it up and taking up all the slop on that end, which is a bit sketchy in my opinion. Got to see now how it steps down in diameter. And that's a 17 mil connector there but the hole in the pipe is 20 mil so but that's 20 mil over there over the back side so I'm not quite sure what we're going to do with that yet maybe we'll just slide it right away over maybe we won't who knows we'll see some found some jubilee clips so we've managed to clip up the top hose and we've now managed to assemble 
uh, modify and fit the K-tuned heater hoses. Um, all clipped up, you can see there we've got the heater valve plumbed in as well. Now, that's just cable tied to the, the short hose. And they've got a little cable tie on the, um, on the arm of the lever just there so that uh, if that decides to try and move that way slightly, which to be fair, it tends not to, um, that's just gonna hopefully stop it from flying off. Yeah, so it's gonna be good to have a heater in the car at least. Um, I know it's a track car or whatever, but it's good to be able to have a bit of heating.